Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I recently attended a Jaguar Electrifies event where we learned a little bit more about the Jaguar I-PACE and I even got to drive it out on the street just to see how it handled. In this video I'm going to go over what I thought about the event, what I thought Jaguar did well, what I think they could improve about the event. I'll go over some of the specifications and features of the Jaguar I-PACE. I'll talk a little bit about what I thought of its driving dynamic and how it handled. And then I'll go over what I liked and what I didn't like about the Jaguar I-PACE and just sort of a general overview. Stick around. Now first, the Jaguar Electrifies event. I thought it was really well run. I thought it was really well managed. They rolled out the red carpets. You had all of the sort of VIP treatment that you would expect from a luxury brand. So good job doing that, Jaguar. I think the event was really, really well run. I do have one concern though. As we were going through and being led to the Jaguar I-PACE, they did offer a lot of other Jaguar products and it felt a bit like a sales pitch. I don't know if that was their intent, but I think a better strategy, because this really is a Jaguar Electrifies event, is in the framing. We got to see a number of really nice cars that Jaguar has produced, F-type cars, their performance vehicles, their luxury vehicles, and I think the framing that was needed was, we are Jaguar, we produce high quality luxury automobiles with a performance emphasis. This is all the tech, this is all the package, this is all the features, these are all the comforts that come with a Jaguar. We took all of that knowledge and all of that experience and we packaged it into an all-electric platform. To me, that framing wasn't quite there or at least wasn't apparent enough and I sort of think that's how you need to approach talking about the I-PACE. I think it's important that you let people know that what you produced is possibly the first luxury all-electric vehicle. And what I mean when I say that is in a traditional sense of what a luxury vehicle is supposed to be, the Jaguar I-PACE is that, but it's purely electric and I think that needs to be emphasized. But otherwise, I think the show was amazing. The staff were knowledgeable and there was a real emphasis on educating people about life with an electric vehicle and they were very keen on making sure that they knew what they were getting into with an electrified vehicle, what to expect, how it fit into their lifestyle and to me that's a very important thing and Jaguar you nailed it, good job. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Jaguar I-PACE's specifications because some information was released very recently and it came out just in time for this event. First and foremost is with its 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, it has an EPA estimated range of 234 miles. Admittedly, that's not great, but I'm going to talk about that more later. In terms of performance, it will do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. The Jaguar I-PACE also comes equipped with two permanent magnet motors, one front, one rear, giving it all-wheel drive. They added badging to the I-PACE that I hadn't seen before where it's EV400. What it means is it's EV400 or 400 horsepower. In terms of charging, I would like to see Jaguar up that to possibly an optional 80 amp level 2 onboard charger because when you have a battery as big as 90 kilowatts you do want the ability to charge faster on public level 2 charging. Jaguar you might consider upselling a upgrade to bring it up to 80 amps. In terms of DC fast charging the Jaguar I-PACE comes equipped with a CCS charger now it's currently rated at 100 kilowatts. Now Jaguar has said that they might update that charging rate to 125 kilowatts in the near future. But in the meantime, what that means is you'll be able to charge from zero to 80% battery in about 40 minutes on a 100 kilowatt or faster DC public fast charging station. 
I was actually very impressed with the Jaguar I-PACE's rear cargo capacity. With the seats up, it has 25.3 cubic feet of cargo space. That's very usable space because it's wide, it's tall enough to hold bags, and it's fairly deep. So I was very, very impressed with that. And when you fold the rear seats down, you have 51 cubic feet of cargo capacity. Now in terms of some of the features, it was just recently released that despite the iPACE having its own built-in navigation, it will also be compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So if that is your preference to use one of those systems, it is available. The iPACE also comes with Sirius Radio, so you also have that entertainment option. In addition, it will offer over-the-air updates, so some of the software can be changed and updated without ever having to take it into a dealer. Now, some of the other nice features that the iPACE has, it does come with the option of a full panoramic roof, which is very, very nice. I don't know how much it adds to the headroom because they didn't have any with the standard roof there for me to compare to, but with the panoramic roof, you felt very, very open and it felt like a lot of space inside the cabin. In addition to that, it does have a true heads-up display. And what I am told is this heads-up display will also work even if you're wearing polarized sunglasses. The Jaguar I-PACE also comes with air suspension. When driving over 65 miles an hour, it will actually reduce the height of the vehicle, which has a positive effect on your fuel efficiency. It can also drive through 19.7 inches of standing water. If you do take your Jaguar I-PACE out in the country, you don't have to worry about driving through a deep puddle or fording a stream. The Jaguar I-PACE unfortunately is not equipped for towing and does not come certified for towing. However, you can mount carriers and other loading devices on the rear of the vehicle, giving you some very usable area for accessories. So now for the good part. How did it drive? Well, it drove really, really well. Now I've driven cars with very similar performance stats to the Jaguar I-PACE. So the performance was exactly what I would expect it to be. Now, to be fair, I only did the street course. I was not able to do the cone challenge. And when I received the Jaguar I-PACE, it was only at 30% battery. So it might have been down a bit on power, but that wasn't necessarily what I was looking to drive it for. I mostly wanted to get a feel for how it rode on the roads, what the overall feeling was, it was just a short drive, so it was mostly just to get a first impression. Now, the driver that was assigned to me from Jaguar, he was very helpful, and the moment he learned that I was familiar with electric vehicles, he immediately set it up so that there was no noise coming from the artificial noise generator, and the regeneration was at the maximum. So I did get a very good impression of how the Jaguar I-PACE would drive if it were set the way I would set it. What impressed me most about the iPACE's driving was just how quiet and smooth it was. The course that we ended up driving was over a lot of road construction, a really rough unfinished pavement, and I think that was by design. The car was very stable, very quiet, very smooth. You really wouldn't have known just how rough or unfinished that roadway was. Now I was able to accelerate just a little bit, mostly enough to, to get a feeling for how the car sort of handled into a corner and accelerated out of it. The thing that was surprising to me is it does feel like it's significantly rear wheel biased. From a driver's perspective, having a rear wheel bias is very nice coming out of a corner, kind of feeling that push as you come through. So I really like the way that it was tuned. I really like the way that the power comes on. So all of that is really good. The one thing that I think wasn't as good as some of the other vehicles I've driven is the low regen to a stop in terms of one pedal driving. Under about three miles an hour, you are probably going to have to use the actual brake pedal in most situations, but it's really not that big of a deal. 
It's why I think Jaguar advertises it in the literature as situational one-pedal driving, because in most situations it works, but you are still going to occasionally need to use your brake pedal. Overall, I think the Jaguar I-Pace felt really substantial, really well put together, very solid. Now I want to go over what I consider some of the weaknesses in the Jaguar I-Pace. And there were really three glaring weaknesses that I want to call out. I mentioned one of them already, and that's the efficiency. When you have a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack in a vehicle the size of the I-Pace, you're really hoping for more than about 234 miles of range. So I'm sure people will beat that range estimate in a lot of real world driving, but they also have to understand that the EPA estimate might not represent driving at freeway speeds where you could see substantially worse than that 234 miles of range. And that's really when that range matters the most. Next is the price. Now, if you look at an F pace, right, you're looking at a starting MSRP of $45,000. So you are paying a significantly higher amount for what really could be considered a luxury item in an all electric drivetrain, but it's to the tune of twenty dollars to $25,000 more that you're paying for an I pace. So that's a pretty high margin to be paying, and I recognize that a bulk of that is coming from the cost of the battery. A 90 kilowatt hour battery pack is likely costing Jaguar close to $18,000 to make if they're actually coming up with a similar $200 per kilowatt hour finished pack price as some other automakers. So that actually accounts for most of that difference, but it's still a significant difference. And the third opportunity where I think Jaguar could improve the I-Pace is in towing. The fact that it isn't equipped for towing, in my opinion, is a big letdown because the vehicle is really well designed. It is something that you would want to be able to tow at least a small trailer with, whether it's camping or just for the utility of carrying things around, it would be nice to have that option. Now luckily for Jaguar, I think all three of those areas of weakness or opportunity that I identified could easily be remedied by making just one change in the entire vehicle. I do think that they should consider adding an induction motor to the powertrain. An induction motor would address all three of those opportunities. The first is being range. With the Jaguar I-Pace setup, what they've done is they've added two permanent magnet motors. But what that does is it actually reduces the overall efficiency because you cannot power one of the motors down when it's unneeded. So you're constantly running with both motors on. A switch to an induction motor for one of the two motors would actually mean that it could power down and not draw power so that your cruising efficiency would be increased substantially. And you're looking at probably a 10 to 15 to possibly as much as a 20% improvement in efficiency, which would mean that a vehicle like the Jaguar I-Pace, instead of seeing 234 miles per battery charge, could see as much as 270 or 280 miles per battery charge. Next, induction motors are actually cheaper to produce. That twenty dollars to $25,000 margin that you see between the I-Pace and the F-Pace, well, most of that is coming from the battery. However, permanent magnet motors are not cheap. An induction motor could easily cost half to a third of that. So you're talking about several thousand dollars that Jaguar would be saving off of the cost of producing the I-Pace, and if they can pass that savings on to their customers, you're looking at now, instead of a $69,000 MSRP, maybe a $65,000, $66,000, $67,000 MSRP. And the final thing that induction motors help with is, because it's a slip motor, it's much easier to program for things like low-end torque without messing with the higher-end efficiency. Replacing one of the permanent magnet motors with an induction motor would actually make towing an easier option to add. 
So overall, just to close, I was very impressed with the Jaguar I-PACE. I think it's absolutely crucial that we have more of these no compromise electric vehicles giving prospective owners options and I think this is among the best of them. I really do think this could be considered one of the first true luxury electric vehicles available. It has all of the features that you would consider a traditional luxury automobile to have. However, it ditches the internal combustion engine completely with very little to no sacrifices. But it does have room for improvement, primarily in those three areas that I stated. The price needs to come down, the range needs to increase, and I would like to see it have additional features like towing. Now one of the features that I didn't really talk about, but it impressed me the most, is the driver instrument center behind the steering wheel actually has the option of projecting your map. So whether it's navigation, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you can do a full map navigation display behind your steering wheel. It's this commanding view. I love the actual look of it. As you're driving down the road, you have no reason to look off to the side. You can look straight ahead. You have a heads up display option look directly through the steering wheel, you have a map that you can interact with using the steering wheel. It's an amazing feature. I love it. I think if I were to drive a Jaguar I-PACE for a long distance, that is absolutely the configuration I would use. So overall, I think the I-PACE is a tremendous value. A lot of the $20,000 premium that you're paying for the I-PACE, it gets swallowed up by the ease of ownership, the low fueling costs, the lack of maintenance. It's unique from anything I've seen up to this point in the electric vehicle space. For me personally, I actually think that the base trim is exactly what I would want. The only feature I personally would maybe add to it would be the heads up display. In fact, I would also want the 18 inch rims rather than the 19 or the 20 inch rims that come as options because for me, the vehicle would serve a purpose of driving on non-maintained roads, out into national forests, going to parks, using it the way an all wheel drive crossover vehicle should be used. I have reached out to Jaguar to see if I would be able to get a press release vehicle for a full vehicle review. Truthfully though, what I would really want to do with the Jaguar I-PACE isn't a traditional auto review. There are dozens of auto reviewers who are going to get access to the Jaguar I-PACE and they're much better at that type of review than I am. What I would specifically ask of Jaguar is the opportunity to have the car for a week. Now I know Bjorn Nieland has already done something like that, but I would really like the opportunity to do something like that for a North American Jaguar I-PACE. I have a great amount of experience with the public charging infrastructure, and I would love to be able to take the I-PACE on my regular 11, 12, 1300 mile weekend that I do where I go to Northern California and come back, show how it reacts to long range driving, show how the I-PACE works with different charging providers. That's the sort of value that I feel like I could bring to a Jaguar I-PACE review. I'm not sure if I could convince Jaguar to let me do that, but who knows, maybe if I get enough support from all of you, if enough likes, enough subscribes, enough promotion, maybe that will be an option and I'll be able to do that sort of a review. So if you enjoyed this review, if you'd like to see me do a review like that, please like and subscribe, please comment. It's something that could help me convince Jaguar to let me do something like that. And hopefully I could present it to all of you in a way that informs you and better lets you make a decision whether the I-PACE would be a vehicle that you would be interested in and would fit your needs. Let me know in the comments what you think about this review, if there's information that you would have liked me to go over, if there's any questions that you have, and thank you for watching.